Hello, everyone, and welcome to Design Expo 2020 virtual. This is Formula SAE, and my name is Nathan Sodini. Who are we? Michigan Tech Formula SAE is an enterprise program at Tech, and we host over 45 students with majors ranging from mechanical engineering all the way through biomedical engineering to business in the finance and engineering management programs. We are a program that strives to continuously improve our knowledge and professionalism through the automotive industry. And we strive to create industry leading professionals who will go out and provide um, absolute advantages to the working force. This year's Design Expo, uh, we were tasked with what is a problem or an issue that you are currently solving on your team? And ours is documentation. It happens every year, we have to see our seniors go off into the real world. And with that, a lot of knowledge can leave the team, a lot of great knowledge. So for us, the transfer of that knowledge from one year to the next is the problem. And we have created um, two different types of ways that we are going to go about keeping this knowledge and retaining it within the team. We want to create iterations of parts, not redesigns. In the past, we were always redesigning part after part because there was no basis to go off of. So if we do slight alterations to the parts and we have a basis to go off of in the future, this allows for a much faster rate of improvement through the vehicle and leading our cars to become one of the top competing cars at competition. So our solution is the one-year build cycle and documentation. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see our one-year build cycle circle. This build cycle is new to us this year. In previous years, we used to use a three-year build cycle, which halt of the team and its ability to improve the car from one year to the next. As one year you're designing, designing a car to be competed with in two years, the following year you're finishing that car for this year's competition and you're starting next year's car for next, for next year's competition. So it's a very halting process in that we couldn't take last year's competition data and put it into next year's vehicle. It would have to wait three to four years. So with that, we start in the fall with our design phase and our training phase, getting everybody acquainted with the machines in the machine shop and being feeling comfortable with using them. Towards the end of the fall and leading into the spring, we have our construction and assembly phases where we build that car and we put it together. Then we have our testing phase, which usually occurs right after spring break and leading into our summer, which is when we compete right in the first week of May. This process really allows us to capture all of the data that we need on one single part any part on the car for that fact and that when you're designing in the fall you fill out the design portion of our task plan which you can see on the right hand side is our very first page of our task plan this can range from anywhere from 15 pages to 137 pages on a part a single part now we have a huge book of these that we bring the competition with us and that this is really vital we are able to have a basis for our future members to go off of what was designed already in years past, it ha this hasn't always been the case. When a new member comes onto the board and he or she is welcome to a project, take for example, the bell cranks. If there is no basis of what a bell crank is, where a bell crank goes, what does it do? What even is a bell crank? That new member may not have any idea of where to go in terms of direction with their project. Having a task plan that we are able to put into their hands gives them a whole basis of what is that part, what does that part do, where was that part designed, who designed it last, why did they design it the way they did, and how could they make it better. It also includes the manufacturing processes of how did they make that part, and also the testing phases, which is slightly new to the task plan, in that what are you going to do to validate that your part is truly adding benefit to the vehicle. This task plan is vital to the, survive, to the survivability of our team. And that if we want to become a top 25 competing team again, like we were in years past, we have to have our knowledge behind us in order to back us when we go into defending our, our engineering design at competition. The task plans not only offer just internal, but also external, and that we are able to share our designs in a clear and concise way with our sponsors. Take, for example, McLaren Engineering, you'll see a little bit later on with our electronic limited slip differential. We're able to communicate our information very clearly. It's in one format and our sponsors are able to understand it. As always with Design Expo, we like to highlight a couple of our premier projects that we have going on. 
This year, we are running another Eric Active Aerodynamics package for us. It is the first year that we're adding Active into Aerodynamics on the Formula SAE team here at Tech, and that our rear wing elements, you can see our couple rear wing elements here, We'll be moving up and down based upon brake pressure, our lateral forces on our car, as well as what this, the speed of the engine is running at. All of these are, compute, are computed into a computer program um, that we had written in our in-house by our electrical controls team. And that will determine if that wing is going up or down in order to increase or decrease drag for the vehicle, leading to faster speeds in the straightaway and much, much, much quicker deceleration of the vehicle into corners. It's also a new process for this year and how we are laying up our carbon fiber. We are using machining foam, which is new to us in years past. Um, we did it in a slightly different way with foam. Um, however, this year we bought a bunch of machining foam, used all the CNC's on campus, and we cut out each of the molds for each of the parts. This then allows us to use these molds for next year's vehicle. Again, saving us money, saving us cost, and saving us time. We will do slight alterations to the molds in order to make them better or change them for design. And that's really going to push our aerodynamics forward in that we're not using four to five weeks just to make molds anymore. We can start laying up carbon fiber right in the first week of school when we get material in, and we can start getting that package put together so much sooner. Our electron, electronic limited slip differential provided by McLaren Engineering allows for our driver to control traction and power to the ground. Our formula cars are two wheel driven and that is both rear wheels. And so in years past, we have run a Drexler differential, which allows us to change the gear. So we have slight alteration in how we want the power transmits to the ground. However, it doesn't give us full control. What this electronic limited slip differential allows us to do, there's two wet clutches in there and we can vary how much power is, is transferred to each axle. This is done by a dial on the steering wheel that is new for us this year as well. And our driver has the ability to control the diff. So what does that mean? That means that we have faster cornering speeds. As we all know, the radius of the circle with the inner tire is much smaller compared to that of the outer tire. And so there, you have different speeds there with the tires. If you have a solid axle, you're gonna be much slower. The E-diff allows us to have two independent axles, so we can corner much faster. It also helps us with our acceleration event at competition, in that we can lock both the axles together and get maximum traction and maximum power to take off that line. This is big design points for us at competition, as we are one of the few, if not the only team, to have electronic limited slip differential, or ELSD, that is this small and we are the first known to be putting it into a formula car. So this will be a big point for us at design to defend, and it could lead to some pretty great benefits for us in terms of design points this year. Another one that we'd like to touch on is our front suspension going on on the front end of the car. We are redesigning that this year in the hope to eliminate chassis tubes. Our chassis tubes are made out of 4130 chromoly, which is light. However, when you have multiple tubes adding up, the weight really does add up quite quickly. So this, this design eliminates a couple of tubes for us, and it also creates a much, much, much more beneficial package in that where the placement of the parts are. So you can see in the top, top right uh, corner, that our shock and our bell crank are up above on the top roll hoop, if you will, of our vehicle. That allows for a clean flow of air to get over our aer aerodynamics elements in the front wing, and it feeds into the radiators in the, in the rear of the vehicle. In last year's car, we did not have this case. The shock and the bell crank were right in the way of our radiator, leading to dirty air and not getting a constant airflow going into our radiator, which led to our car overheating. So with this new design, it also improves the handling of the vehicle. The tunability is also much easier for us in that we can just pop off our nose cone and we have the shocks right there. Um, pretty exciting suspension for us. Um, in our findings, we also led to changing our tire size. We're going to go to a smaller profile, which leads to faster cornering speeds. So if you can picture higher profile of tire on the sidewall, the rubber will fold over in the corners. Lower profile, the, full, the rubber won't fold over as much, leading to more traction. Our last project that we would like to highlight is our electronic throttle. 
This is very new to us. This is the first year that we are running it. A lot of other teams do run this. Um, however, they don't quite have it dialed in just yet. So for us, we want that ability to tune. It also reduces weight. Instead of drive-by wire, we're driving over um, e-throttle. In future cars, uh, this could be tied into our active aero elements as we want to add active aero to our front wing in the future. It also leads to quite a few design points at competition if you have one of these working properly and working right and you really showcase it to the judges. On the right of your screen, you can see that um, this is the top and the bottom view of our circuit board that we had designed in-house by our electronics and controls team. We had it sent off, printed, and we just got it in actually a couple weeks ago right before spring break. So we're pretty excited for our electronic throttle um, in that it leads to a lot of whole new adventures that we can do in terms of, of programming our ECU on the car and programming different elements of the vehicle to do different things at different times. And with that, we want to thank you for taking the time to tune in with us. Again, my name is Nathan Sodini. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or anybody on the Formula team. And we wish the best.